Hi, and welcome to the Library 2035, Imagining the Next Generation of Libraries webcast series. My name is Elena Hall, and I have had the pleasure of working with C.D. Hirsch, editor of this book, and as contributing authors to produce this book in accompanying webcasts. Over the past several weeks, Sandy Hirsch has interviewed many of the contributing authors who have shared their vision for libraries over the next decade. Today, Sandy joins me to answer similar questions about her chapter, Chapter 25, The Way Forward for Libraries and Her Vision for the Library of 2035. Sandra Hirsch is Associate Dean for Academics in the College of Professional and Global Education at San Jose State University and previously served 10 years as professor and director of the School of Information. She has an extensive and varied background as a library and information science educator, leader, researcher, and professional, both in library and other information environments. She's active in professional associations like ALA and IFLA and is a past president of the Association for Library and Information Science Education, ELISE, and of the Association for Information Technology, the third edition of her foundational library and information science textbook, Information Services Today, an introduction was published by Roman Littlefield in 2022. Throughout chapter 25, Hirsch summarizes the key themes throughout the book and echoes the focus that several authors place on a future for libraries where they will be more resilient, responsive to, and collaborative with their communities. While the future will certainly present both opportunities and challenges, Hirsch notes libraries that thrive in 2035 will have built a foundation of strategic insight, te technological adaptability, and community responsiveness, collaboration and partnerships, and the ability to consistently advocate for their value. Welcome, Sandy Hirsch. Thank you so much, Elaine. I'm really excited to talk to you today. I'd like to open up our discussion by asking you why you chose to produce Library 2035 and imagining the next generation of libraries. Well, yes, thank you, Elaine. Uh, well, Library 2035, Imagining the Next Generation of Libraries is actually a follow-on book from an earlier book that was called Library 2020, Today's Leading Visionaries Describe Tomorrow's Library, which was edited by Joan James. And I had three reasons why I chose to produce this updated book. First of all, um, it was really time for us to update our thinking about what the future of libraries will look like. Since Library 2020 was originally published, there's been so many changes that have happened in our society that have impacted libraries. And many of these changes were not possible to predict back when the book Library 2020 was originally produced. For example, it was impossible for them to have predicted what was gonna happen with the global pandemic and the impact that that would have on libraries. In addition to that, to that, there have been many other shifts in society um, and other kinds of changes from technological ones to uh, um, major racial unrest and injustices and to uh, book challenges and book bans in our schools and libraries. So it was definitely time for us to update our thinking to reflect these kinds of changes and to uh, anticipate what would lie ahead. Uh, my second reason was that we needed, it's, you know, as a result of these changes, we need to be exploring how libraries will adapt to these um, changes. Specifically, we need to be rethinking, reimagining um, how libraries will pivot, adapt, and evolve into the future. And my third reason was that I was excited about the having the opportunity to invite different people, fresh voices and perspectives to share why, what, what they anticipate for libraries over the next decade. So I invited what I thought was a very diverse set of library leaders and thinkers who brought their a range of experiences, perspectives to think about what that future might look like. And what I found, and I hope the readers will find as well, is that their viewpoints really inspired me and made me excited to think about what the future will look like and how it will unfold for libraries. And Sandy, what is your vision for the future of libraries in 2035? Yeah, well, in my chapter in the book, I draw an analogy between how redwood trees are dealing with the devastating California wildfires that they experienced and how libraries are dealing with the many challenges that they're facing and are going to continue to face into the future. I have seen how the redwood forests, which were 
almost entirely destroyed by wildfires showed remarkable regrowth, regeneration, and resilience. And I believe that libraries possess a similar power to evolve, adapt, and overcome adversity. So my vision for the library of the future is that libraries will become even more resilient, more responsive, more collaborative, and more essential to the success of the communities that they're serving. So in other words, and we've heard this multiple times through um, other authors who contributed to the book, that I believe that libraries that are connected to their community's needs will be the ones that will be best equipped to evolve regenerate and overcome the challenges that await them in the future. And these are the ones that are going to be able to thrive and be successful in the future. Yeah, I just love that analogy. It's great. So um, on a little bit less positive side, uh, what are you concerned about? What do we have to be thinking about as we head into the next decade? Yeah, that's a hard question because I think that there are a number of challenges that uh, libraries are facing. But I'll just mention two that I think are particularly concerning. One of the issues I'm most concerned about is the dramatic increase in book bans and intellectual freedom challenges that we've been seeing. I think it's critical for our field to build strong advocacy skills and to speak up to protect the right to read freely. The second thing that I wanted to mention that I'm concerned about is about the growing and urgent need for people to develop strong information and digital literacy skills, which are essential for ensuring an informed society and democracy. We've seen generative AI like chat GPT um, increase the importance of cultivating these literacy skills. For example, we need to be able to differentiate between what's fake news and what's factual information. And this need to develop strong information and digital literacy skills, I think will continue to increase into 2035. And we definitely have a lot of work to do in those two areas. Yeah, I agree. So what are you most excited about? I'm, what I'm most excited about is our people. That I mean, the library workers, the information professionals, the library supporters, they're the ones who are bringing the fresh ideas and their passion for serving the community. And so if we revert back to my analogy about the Redwoods, in many ways, these professionals provide the foundation for continuous regrowth and resilience, not only in the information profession, but also in the communities that they serve. And I, having, from my vantage point, having served as iSchool director at the San Jose State University School of Information for 10 years, and now in my capacity as associate dean at San Jose State, I feel very inspired every day and excited about what new people are, who are entering the profession will bring. So in sum, I believe that our shared foundational values for this library and information science field are strong. And I have full confidence that the people who work in libraries and those who are working in support of libraries will successfully be able to build upon that strong foundation of core values and help our libraries evolve and adapt into the future um, to meet the needs of our communities. Right. What do you think has had the biggest impact on libraries over the past decade? Well, that's really hard to narrow down. <laughs> There's been so many changes and so many things that have had impact on libraries. But if I were to pick just one, I would say that it was the COVID-19 pandemic and the global disruption that that had on how societies learned, worked, engaged, and communicated. But libraries rose to the occasion and they pivoted into new ways to provide library services that extended beyond the physical library. And I believe that that has forever changed libraries and how they deliver their services. And what about the next decade? What do you think will be the biggest impacts? Yeah, I think technology will continue to have a big impact on libraries in the next decade. For example, we've, um, we've seen the dramatic growth of generative AI and its widespread uh, integration into many everyday tools and systems that we're using. Um, I think major technology changes like that typically bring about both benefits and challenges. And we can see that with generative AI and how that has improved efficiencies and has helped with content curation. But at the same time, it's introduced concerns around bias and ethical and responsible use of AI. 
I think that another challenge with some of the new technology in introduction is that they frequently create disparities in access as not everyone is able to gain access to the latest technology tools, systems, and digital content. And we're starting to see some of those disparities already with generative AI, for example, with those who have access only to the free versions of chat GPT and other generative AI tools and versus those who can afford to pay for the more up-to-date and more powerful versions of those systems. So I think that librarians and libraries will become essential in guiding their communities through the complexities of generative AI and some of the many other technologies we are going to be seeing that lie on the horizon. And I think that libraries will play a critical role in helping to mitigate these access disparities as well. And to kind of wrap up as your reflection a little bit, um, has your thinking changed at all since you last wrote your chapter? No, not really. It, I don't think my thinking has changed. I still believe that libraries are resilient and if well aligned and connected to their communities, I still believe that they'll be able to evolve, adjust and regenerate into the future. Great. Right. And do you have any advice for information professionals as they look forward to their careers in the next 10 years? I do. Yes. I, I think that it's important that we remain agile, adaptive, and innovative. As David Lenkes um, pointed out in the book, in his chapter, there is no one future for libraries. There are many. As a result, libraries need to be reflective of their users and of their communities and the communities that they serve are very diverse. So we need to continually adjust and adapt and not get locked into a status quo mindset. We also need to be open to learning new ways to do things and be open to learning entirely new skills uh, because our the kinds of things that we need to know how to do with the growth of new technologies is changing as well. So given that pace of change, uh, I think that information professionals may need to be focusing a little less on upskilling, that is learning new skills to optimize their performance in the current roles that they're performing, and instead may need to be focusing more on reskilling and thinking about getting trained to adapt to new roles that are emerging. And we have a book chapter uh, that addresses some of the kinds of future job roles and competencies that will be needed that was written by Stacey Aldrich and Jared Keller. And is there anything, anything they can do to better prepare for their future? Yeah, I have three recommendations that are information professionals. First, throughout my career, I have always advocated for the importance of lifelong learning. So it will come as no surprise to anyone when I recommend that information professionals commit to learning, exploring, engaging with new technologies and new ideas. As I've discussed in previous answers, gener generative AI is a good example of how we need to continually learn new things so that we can harness the potential of those new technologies to improve our services and the ways that we support our communities. So in other words, we need to continually invest in our growth and our potential. We need to stay curious and we need to learn new things. Another point I wanted to um, uh, make, another recommendation I have, is that information professionals need to be open to and embrace change. If there's one thing we've learned over the past decade is that things are going to continually, continually change. So it's important that we not fight against that change and instead we should learn how to prepare for that. And third, I'd say that information professionals need to stay connected to and to listen to their communities. They really need to be attuned to their community's needs and work together with their communities. Great. You may have already addressed some of this, but what about key competencies? They do what they need for the future. Yeah, I think in addition to some of the things I've already mentioned, having strong advocacy skills, the ability to tell stories and the ability to establish strong partnerships and collaborate are some of the key competencies that librarians will need to thrive in 2035. So I'll go into a little more detail about each of those points. So first, I think that strong advocacy skills are essential so that we can advocate for libraries, 
for librarians, for library services, for the user's right to read, um, read to free expression, for legislation, standards, and policies. And also we need to be advocating for acceptance and tolerance. Second, I think it's extremely important to tell stories that the library about the library's value and its impact. Chris Brown, one of our book's contributors, discusses that in Library 2035. And then third, the, um, the ability to establish strong partnerships and to collaborate will also be essential. Librarians need to establish connections and collaborate with a range of stakeholders in order to be successful. Right. So now kind of a fun and challenging question. Um, throughout this webcast series, you've been asking the authors to define their vision of the future of libraries in just six words. So now it's your turn. How would you define the future in six words? Yeah, that's I, I made a tough challenge for myself <laughs> in um, challenging all the other authors to this. I gave this some thought and uh, and I think I, I can boil down my uh, main point and my vision to the following words. Libraries are essential for thriving communities. Right. Love it. So Sandy Hirsch, thank you for coordinating such an important project for the field of library and information science and for your personal contribution to Library 2035, Imagining the Next Generation of Libraries. It has been a pleasure to talk with you and hear your vision of the future of libraries. And thank you, Elaine Hall, for all of your contributions to the book and all your support and work. It's been a pleasure working with you. And uh, it just you've made such a difference in terms of bringing your professionalism and excellence to this project. So I just want to thank you again for all of your hard work. Well, it's been my pleasure. Thank you for attending this webcast series with Sandy Hurst, author of Chapter 25, The Way Forward for Libraries. To view additional author webcasts from this Library 2035 webcast series, please visit the link or use the QR code on the screen.